Hello everyone, welcome to the tavern. So finally the DLC has dropped. And in order to start the tavern, or start opening a tavern, you get a prompt when you log into the game that says, rumor has it there's a tavern for sale in Stromkop, as you just saw there. And all you have to do is actually just head to Stromkop. So let's head on over to Stromkop. Now once you're in Stromkop within Tiltrain County, just look for the derelict cat tavern. Click on it and interact with the NPC Luke. As the merchant in charge of selling this little marvel, it's my pleasure to welcome you mercenaries. Take your time, have a look around this fine building and just soak in the atmosphere. Let me draw your attention to the low maintenance dirt floor and the roof that's never once failed in its hundred years of existence. But the best part, mercenaries? The price! For a tiny, almost inconsequential investment, you can finally become the proud tavern keepers you've always dreamed of being. Now he's definitely not lying when he said inconsequential investment because as I hover over this option to buy it, it only costs one crown. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase the tavern. Excellent decision, mercenaries. You won't regret it. I'll leave you to your cleanup. You won't be needing me anymore. And there you go. Congratulations. You have access to your one and only tavern in War Tales. Now, before you can do anything further, um, just one thing to note is you can access this tavern pretty early in the game. In this current save I have, my companions are all pretty low level. I'm still in Tiltrin. I have not ventured much further than where I started in Tiltrin County. And you can see even with limited crowns, because it only costs one crown, I can pretty much access the tavern and have a tavern of my own. So what do we need to do next? We just need to clean it up. Just left click on all these cobwebs, the debris, damage table, and you'll get a prompt to say you've learned a specialty, and we'll cover that in the next part of this guide. The last thing you need to clear out is this wood. You'll need to destroy it, and in order to destroy it, you actually need a woodcutter. Now, I don't have a woodcutter, so I'm going to assign one of these companions to be the woodcutter, and we'll cut wood. So it's going to be the same mini game that you normally encounter when you're cutting wood, or when you find wood to cut, or chop, I guess, out in the world. With just five aligning the moving circle within the small the static circle. Once you've done that, you come up with five objectives as you can see on the left, as well as some text or guiding information that serves as a tutorial for you to allow you to set up your tavern. And lastly, what you get is what you want what would you like to name your tavern? So I'm gonna call my tavern the hideout. There you go. One of the things I wondered when I started playing the Tyrant is, do I always have to be in Stromkop uh, to access the Tyrant? And I found out that no, I don't have to be. As you can see, I'm currently in Virtuous Province, just outside Marheim. I'm not even in Marheim. If I want to access the Tyrant, all I have to do is go to my camp, and you'll see a new icon up here that says Tyrant. If you left click on that, you're in your Tyrant, and you can start managing it. Now, accessing your Tyrant you can, aside from that, you can also assign your companions while you're traveling away from your tavern to the tavern. So in this case, for example, I want to assign Garen. He's not immediately assigned, so if I left click on him, I, the only option I have is to transfer the troop. I can't assign him to any of these staff options. If I left click on Sudagia, I can assign her to one of these options because she doesn't have the symbol up here that says en route, this companion will reach the tavern by the next shift. So we actually have to wait the next shift. We either have to rest, or if you have the new shift option opened, unlocked, you can click on that. The new shift will run without having to rest. And if I go back to staffing, you'll see, okay, Garen is now available, and I can assign him as a bouncer or a tavern keeper. Now the one thing, if you want to assign your companions back to your troop. So in this case, I'm not really using Degrena or Vosles or Viseros in the tavern. I just have to left click and transfer the troop. It is instantaneous, as you can see. There is no traveling back to the troop. Straight away, Vosles is now available in the troop. If I go onto this menu, you can see Vosles is there, while Garen is missing. So that's how you can access the tavern through the camp but also how you can assign companions 
to the tavern whenever you're out exploring and not actually in Stromkamp. One aspect I'd like to talk about is staffing. So as you would have seen, the, to get your tavern up and running, the bedroom room you need is just really a tavern keeper and a cook. But you do have all these other professions, being a brewer. Now a brewer produces or ages alcohol that again you can sell. And a bard, who will increase comfort level. Bouncers, obviously to increase and improve security. And thieves. Now the thieves will reduce security, but they will generate revenue by robbing your patrons. Now, obviously this does mean that security goes down and may not be a very good place to actually just sit down and have a meal. The other thing I want to talk about is the different proficiency levels of your employees' professions impact the outcome of their jobs or impacts their jobs that they do are assigned to do. So for example, as cooks, Inquisitor Aurea is a master cook and Hadalt is an experienced cook. The difference is Inquisitor is able to produce food, six food or six dishes of the same item and she adds six of uh, four dish slots to the menu. In addition to that, she has a specialty bonus where she also increases food production by one. And I'll show you what that means in a second when we go to the menu. Adult, on the other hand, because he's only an experienced cook, only can produce five of the same dishes and is only adding three dish slots to the menu. So if I go to the menu, you'll see that Inquisitor Aurea has four dish slots, allowing her to sell up to four dishes, four different dishes, as long as they only take one place per dish. On the other hand, if we look at Hadal, he can only sell, he only has three dish slots, so he can only sell up to three items, as long, again, as long as they only require one slot per dish. The seven, the number seven and five, this means for Inquisitor Aurea, she can make up to seven of the same dish, so seven bread, seven grilled pork, seven sausage, and seven chicken. Hadalt, on the other hand, can only make maximum five of the same dish, so mutton, skewers, and carp. They, that means Inquisitor Aurea can sell up to 28 items maximum, while Hadalt can sell up to 15. So the difference in their proficiency level does impact how effective they are in their roles in the tavern. Another example is if you look at Bouncer. Or oh, sorry, let's look at Thieves. Let's assign Endavan and Surigia as Thieves. Now Endavan is an apprentice thief, Surigia is a master thief. You'll see that Surigia reduces security by 10, steals between 25 to 30 copper coins, and reduces the odds of getting caught by 95%. For Endavan, who's only an apprentice thief, reduces security by a lot more, by 14, only steals between 15 and 25 compared to Surigia, it's 25 to 30, and only reduces the odds of getting caught by 80%, not 95% like Surigia. Okay, so again, impact on the role they're assigned. Another thing is sometimes it's not the impact, sometimes it's more the type of class they are. So in this case, as a bouncer, the Grina and Bolsles, they're both sorties. And therefore their effects are considered muscle, their specialty, they attract working class patrons. But if we go to Ledigray, he's not a sortie. Ledigray is, I can't remember, I've not played for a while, he's a hunter. So he's considered de-escalation. He actually attracts upscale patrons. So again, depending on what kind of clientele you want to attract, you want to actually have this changed so that it reflects the type of patrons you want. So if I wanted to attract working class, I would assign more muscle-based, either companions or civilians. If I want to attract upscale, patrons, I would assign Hunters, Sudagia uh, Endavan, who is a ranger, would also attract the same upscale patrons. Okay, so I think the way to best classify it is anyone that is focused on dexterity would attract upscale patrons, anyone that's focused on strength would, would actually attract working class patrons. The last one is really the Tavern Keeper. Again, it can differ 
Same thing, Dexterity would attract upscale patrons. If I use Visceros and assign him as Tyrant Keeper, Visceros is strength based, he attracts working class patrons. So that's what I would like to cover and hopefully share with you so that you know which kind of companion or civilian to assign to any of these roles in the hopes of making your tavern very successful. Now in the tavern, there are two types of patrons you can attract, upscale or working class. But there are also various types of clientele. If you go to tavern management and if you click on clientele, you can see these are all the types of clientele you can actually attract to your tavern. Now, why is it important? That tells you whether they're actually working class, upscale or mixed. In this case, sailors are mixed. And it also tells you when you'll get a reward from them. So in this case, if I welcome 100 merchants to my tavern, I will get a reward. Now, I haven't played through completely and unlocked everything, so I don't know what it is, but I would love to be surprised to see what kind of reward they will give me. Now, why it's important to have to know what kind of clientele and whether they're up, upscale or working class is then it helps you dictate the menu. So if I go to the menu, for example, we are able to tell in this case, let me have a quick look. Factions attracted for apple pancake. You can see that it attracts bandits and peasants. Now, bandits and peasants. If I go back to the tavern management, look at the clientele, bandits is working class and peasants is working class. That tells me that if I am trying to pursue an upscale tavern, I should not be offering apple pancake as a dish for sale. I should be looking for something that attracts courtiers and perhaps even sailors. So what would that look like? Good question. This would be this one, eel soup. As you can see, we would attract that symbol, the first symbol next to faction attracted. That's the, that's the, um, what's the name? Courtiers, sorry. And so that would help in attracting upscale because it's a bit like a matrix of matching your different factors of the tavern. When it comes to staffing, you, if you want to attract upscale clients, obviously, Make sure you choose a tavern keeper that is dexterity based. Make sure you choose bouncers that are also dexterity based. So in this case, I'm getting rid of Vosles and Duguena because Endavon would attract upscale patrons and so would Pedigree. I would not have a thief because a thief would actually decrease security and upscale clients do not want that. So that would then allow me to maximize the chances of getting more and more upscale clients. The Tavern DLC introduces a new currency called Copper Coins. Now, Copper Coins are used to pay for your employees' wages in the Tavern, as well as supply costs for ingredients that are used to cook your dishes that you sell in your Tavern. It is also the currency that your patrons pay you in for the dishes that they consume or the alcoholic beverages that they consume as well. So, what's the relation between Copper Coins and Crowns? Well. That's the whole point of the Tavern DLC. It allows you to generate passive income to supplement your War Tales activities. So it's not just about going out and hunting bounties and completing quests, but also allow you to manage the Tavern, generate some passive income so you don't have to complete those activities every single time. So how do you convert Copper Coins into Crowns? All you have to do is go to Tavern Management and you can see here, you have the ability to withdraw your copper coins and convert them into crowns. Now one thing to be careful, I haven't yet seen an option to convert it the other way. So let's say you're running out of copper coins because you want to purchase more furniture or you want to hire more staff or you've suddenly run running a lot large loss and you really need more copper coins. There is no option that allows you to convert it the other round. The other thing also to note is the currency or the exchange rate does not always stay one to one. So for example, in this case, it's 100 to 100. If I were to withdraw 100 copper coins, I now get, if I were to draw it again, instead of getting 100 crowns, I'm now only going to get 88 crowns. So it actually does reduce. So just be mindful. Now, that doesn't mean that every time you keep withdrawing, it keeps reducing. This 
exchange rate reduces only if you keep withdrawing within the same shift, so to speak. If you rest, this gets restored back to 100. So basically, if I rest now, the exchange rate will be 100 copper coins, 100 crowns. So let me just go to extreme and show you an example. So I withdraw again, it's now 76. So if I were to withdraw another 100 copper coins, I only get 76 crowns. Let me quickly rest. One, two, five, six. Ooh. Where's my other food? Okay, let's rest. Let's go back to the tavern. And let's have a look at the exchange rate. Now it goes back up. It didn't go up entirely to 100, but as you saw previously, it was 76. So it does gradually replenish back to a more reasonable exchange rate. So just be mindful of that. You can't just withdraw everything. I, or I wouldn't suggest withdrawing everything in one go. Do it over a number of rests or shifts. The tavern also has a concept called prestige. And as you can see here in the description, it's a measure of the tavern's success. This allows you to order better equipment and based on the number of number, variety and satisfaction of patrons. So as you can see in this save that I have, I have 123 prestige. It does unlock a few things. It unlocks this new option here, new shift, which allows me to create a new shift without the need to rest because in order for a shift to progress, you actually need to go to your camp and then rest your companions. But in this case, instead of doing that, I can just spend influence points and basically start a new shift. The other thing that prestige allows you to do is if you have enough, so I think this requires 100 prestige, this option as well, sorry, this is 50 prestige, new shift, and there's 100 prestige. Once you get 100 prestige, you can start looking at rival taverns. As you can see here, my prestige is 123, and these are the prestige of all the other taverns around War Tales. Now the thing, the, the fun thing you can do is once you've unlocked this, looking at rival taverns, you can do a lot of things depending on the employee type you choose. So I can steal copper coins from the other inns. Obviously success rate is dependent on where you sit within this ranking. So as you can see here, I'm, because the gap between Mother Bear and me is quite high, success rate is zero. If I go to Traveler's Feast, it's 70%. If I go to Link's Paw, that's 18%. I can also steal other things. I can actually get secret recipes if I assign a Master Cook. So a Master Cook, 18%. If I use Hadult, it goes down to 0%. So again, the profession plays a role in these additional activities you can do within the tavern. If I go to a Bouncer, you can actually remove their prestige points from your rivals. The other thing Prestige allows you to do is it unlocks other things, obviously, as it says in the description, it unlocks the equipment you can buy. So I have more options here. I can purchase a tavern loot. I can purchase a menu, so to speak, for display. Increase the sale odds by 20% for all patrons in the area. I can also have more decorations, which increases uh, or attracts different types of patrons. So in this case, this one attracts upscale patrons. This one attracts working class patrons and other things or inclusion and exclusions. For example, factions attracted are those three that's listed. So prestige is quite important. It's always good to see if you can increase it as much as you can, because that will open up more opportunities and more options for you in managing your tavern. So the last thing I'd like to talk about is the shift report. Now the shift report is generated after the completion of each shift and when you have rested, that represents the end of a shift, and you'll get this section here that gives you a quick summary of the shift report, and you can have a look at the detailed shift report by clicking on Show Shift Report. Now, there is a lot of numbers, colors, and icons that you are presented with that gives you a lot of detail on what makes up the profit. In this case, actually, it's a loss of two copper coins. For me, I like this because I like numbers, I like data, and anything to do with money. My management is kind of my forte. 
But when it comes to, I guess, if you're feeling overwhelmed with all this, then I would suggest only two things to focus on. One, in this stop section, just have a look down your list and ensure you don't have any people that you have unassigned. Basically, you're paying them a wage. In this case, I'm paying 12 copper coins in total, and they're not doing anything. So either assign them something to do, or in this case, because I'm making a loss, perhaps I shouldn't assign them anything to do. Even if they can do something, I should maybe assign them back to the troop. The other is in the menu section. In this totals column, that actually represents the profitability for each dish. For the events and skewers, it's actually not making us a profit. Now, if it's negative or zero, that is something to look into. So the Venison Skewers, while Inquisitor Aurea has sold 5 of them for a total of 60 copper coins, it actually still costs us 60 copper coins to cook these dishes because we have to pay 60 copper coins for the ingredients. Now you would think, well, it's not really a bad thing because she's not making us a loss, so we don't need to do anything. Not necessarily, because don't forget you're still paying her a wage of 9 copper coins. And she's not actually bringing any profits from her dishes, which means we're making a loss in employing her because we still pay her nine copper coins. If you have a look at Adult, for example, instead, he has brought in 20 copper coins in profit. That is more than enough to cover his wages of eight copper coins. So individually, his net profit or his contribution to the tavern is 12 copper coins. So let's look into this medicine skewers. What is going on? So let's go into the tavern. Oops, sorry. They always want to talk a lot. Okay, we can close this. Let's have a look at menu. We'll look at Benson Skewers. Now what's going on? We can see here that it only costs or patrons only have to pay 12 copper coins for a Benson Skewer. And the cost would normally be eight in terms of ingredients to the supplier. But there's an extra four because there's a shortage. You can either see the red number there, or we can see here the shortages. Venison is one of the shortages. So that's why it's not making us any money. So perhaps we need to shift it and change it to boiled eel because you can see the green highlight. That means that ingredient is on promotion up here. So boiled eel, we would sell for 12 copper coins. And the cost is normally eight in terms of ingredients, but because it's a promotion, it is now six. So eight minus two. So I'd expect in the next shift, upcoming shift, that each boiled eel will generate a profit of six copper coins. Now, if you want to access shift report, let's say you have exited your camp and you're like, oh, where do I find it again? All you have to do is go to tavern management, click on this growth, and then you have show shift report. The good thing about this option is you don't just look at the most recent one, and go back in time and look at every single shift and what it has to say including any events that happened so i found that pretty useful the shift report can also be generated if you instigate a new shift if you have this option available down here so yes i hope that helps in helping you manage your tavern a bit better because i definitely find it useful the last thing i'd like to talk about is what I think about the Tavern DLC. I think it's a very good DLC, even though it's just managing one Tavern throughout the whole War Tales environment, rather than multiple Taverns. One Tavern it itself has enough components to play with, so the fact that I could you know, create my own menu, I can look at the pricing, I can look at and worry about the cost of supplies, whether they're on promotion or shortages, there's also a seller option to produce more alcoholic beverages. The ability to add and change your layout. Yes, I would love that. I would have loved if I could actually access all, all four walls and put more decorations. But it is fine as is. I like that it's progressive as you gain more prestige, you unlock more options in terms of layout that then has impact on security, comfort, and whether you're attracting upskill or working class clientele. The fact that staffing is not just based on people that you just fill, I guess, vacant spots, 
but their proficiency in their professions actually impacts what they do. And the fact that they built in, if you're a tech space kind of um, companion or civilian, you actually attract upskill clients. If you are strength based, you attract working class. And at the same time, you could also use this, the ability to better use this as a passive way to level up your troops, your companions, if you don't want to actively match them in the camp or in the outside world. For example, a bard, rather than singing in every tavern uh, littered around war tales, you could just leave them in this tavern that you manage and let them level up over time. So that saves you time from having to actually continually play songs or sing at the taverns. The other is really the ability for the tavern to be a passive income generator. I, I really do like that. You can then convert your copper coins into crowns. I like that they actually separated so that there are two distinct currencies. I think that's pretty good. Isolating the funds that are related to the business within the business and everything else in relating to adventure in a separate pot. I also do like the fact that you have a lot of different types of clientele rather than just one single generic clientele. And for each clientele, there is something to look forward to because there are rewards you can get depending on the number of clientels you had have actually attracted to your tavern and the data I like data I like the historical graphs as well I, I do enjoy that that makes it seem like I am really running a business and finally the rival tavern section which gives you an arbitrary ranking of where you are in terms of your tavern I know this is not a ranking against a live ranking against all other war tales players but it is a good start I definitely appreciate the infiltration ability, so a thief can get copper coins, a cook can get secret recipes, same with a brewer, a bard can get you more prestige, and a bouncer can actually remove prestige from your rivals. So all in all, I am really enjoying this DLC. I haven't fully explored every single option um, or feature in this tavern DLC, especially with the tavern management. And once I do, I'll be sure to update this guide just to ensure everyone has enough information to enjoy this DLC and enjoy the War Tales game as well. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this guide and I'll see you next time. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.